Hi YouTube friends, it's Chrissy from First Day of Home and I am so excited to be back today. I took a little break with the whole stay at home craziness and I just wanna say I hope all of you are doing well out there and getting back into the groove hopefully. I am excited today to jump back in with an outdoor challenge hosted by Christina at the DIY Mommy. Now if you don't know Christina, go pay her channel a visit. She is so talented and does a lot of different crafts and DIY decor that I think you're going to love. Today I have a fun project for you guys. We're going to take plain terracotta pots and completely transform them using paint and decoupage. So let's go ahead and dive in. Before you get started painting, you might want to apply some of this clay pot sealer on the inside of your terracotta pots. This will just help prevent the paint from leaking or bleeding once you're done. I do want to say thanks to Plaid Crafts for providing some of the paint and other supplies for this tutorial. There's no magic to how you apply the paint. I prefer foam brushes and do about two or three coats, waiting about an hour in between. I used a yellow acrylic paint on some of the pots and then I use this white chalk paint for other pots. And I really like the thickness of chalk paint. I think it works really well for painted projects like this. I will link to all of the supplies in the description box below. If you wanna paint the rims a different color, just use a little bit of painter's tape to mark off the edges. I decided to paint this little pot with a blue rim. So I mixed some colors until I got a color that would match the napkins that I plan to use for decoupage. So you can always adapt if you have multiple different acrylic colors on hand and you don't have just the right shade. Feel free to mix different colors, use black to darken it, maybe a little white to soften it if you need to. And that's exactly what I did for this project. With darker colors, you may only need one coat of paint. That's what I did on this little pot. And I also wanted to mention that this chalk paint that I used, this white color, only required about one or two coats, far less than a regular acrylic paint. So that's one of the reasons I really love using chalk paint for projects like this. You may have noticed that I have pots of various sizes because my end goal was to create kind of a topsy-turvy tower of pots. That's not easy to say. So I wanted to make sure I planned out and coordinated the different colors that I would use to coordinate with my patio set. And here I used painter's tape to mark off some spots that I could paint blue and have an alternating stripe pattern around the rim of this particular pot. You might have a few little touch-ups to do here and there, but overall it comes out pretty well when you use that painter's tape. After your pots are all painted, you will want to take some Mod Podge and some pretty decoupage napkins or just regular cocktail napkins like I bought, and you'll start to separate your plies to begin your decoupage. The largest pot I used was about nine or 10 inches wide, so I ended up using about three cocktail napkins to cover it all. You know me, whenever it comes to decoupage with napkins, I always have some plastic wrap handy and you'll see why in a moment that that is helpful. So after pouring some Mod Podge in a bowl, I'm just going to start by coating the planter with one layer of Mod Podge and then applying my napkin. You can tell it was a little windy outside, so I had to reposition my napkin a little bit, but that's totally okay. You'll find that you can work with it a bit right after you apply it, and then to really smooth it out without having it stick to your fingers, I always suggest using a little bit of plastic wrap, and that really helps to prevent wrinkles and get it on there very securely. I love how you can already tell it's starting to look like chinoiserie pottery that you've seen, which is blue and white, and it really looks hand painted on here. So as we go around the edges of the napkin, you'll just wanna to continue to add Mod Podge and then layer on one napkin at a time. And I'll show you in just a moment how you get rid of those edges that are hanging over. I'm going to use a little bit of water and a paintbrush, and I'm just going to lightly tap around the bottom of the pot to then gently rip off that extra piece that's hanging off because I do want to remove that before I'm ready to use my pot. And this is really the best way to get a nice feathered edge. If you want to get extra fancy as you add each additional napkin, you can try to line up the pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to be studying this, but I like to try to have a consistent pattern all the way around. And again, I'm using my plastic wrap to smooth it down as I move around the pot. 
Around the rim of the pot, I'm doing that same water technique with my paintbrush and then just ripping away the excess napkin. And I really love the way it's starting to look. What do you think? Do you think it looks painted? Would you be able to tell that this is a napkin from far away? Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are and what you plan to do with your pots. Now, after I remove this final piece of overlapping napkin, I'm going to wait about 20 minutes for this layer of Mod Podge to dry, and then I'm going to pull out my Mod Podge Outdoor Formula. Now, the thing to know about this particular formula of Mod Podge is that it is not waterproof, it is water resistant. So after you apply a coat, you will have better resistance to the outdoors, but I would not recommend that you put your pots in an uncovered area where they're going to get rained on and exposed to the sun directly. You will wanna seal the painted pots as well with this outdoor Mod Podge formula. The final step is just putting it all together. Again, I did a little stacked pot for display, but I would actually recommend if you have decoupage pots that you probably wouldn't want to stack them because you don't want the exterior to get soaked once you water them. So I'm doing this just for display, but I may separate these pots later. And I went ahead and filled in with a little bit of angelonia and some purslane, portulaca, and a few little vincas to make my stacked tower. So what do you think? Is this something you wanna try for your porch or patio this summer? If you end up trying it, I'd love to see your creations. You can tag me on Instagram at first day of home. I hope you had fun making your own decorated flower pots. And don't forget, there are plenty of other talented YouTubers to see after this. If you'll just hit that playlist in the description box below, it will take you to the challenge hosted by the DIY Mommy. If you're new to my channel, thanks again for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and give this a like if you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.